How do you challenge a parking ticket that's been issued by a private company, such as a ticket in a supermarket or a hospital car park? And when are you entitled not to pay it? I'm Daniel Barnett. I'm a barrister practicing in London and I'm the presenter of The Legal Hour on LBC Radio. And in this video, I'll advise on when to challenge a private parking ticket, when to pay and when not to pay. This is one of a series of films I've made to guide you through the process of challenging parking tickets. In this video, I'll explain the difference between a ticket from a council and a private company, how to challenge your ticket, and the risks and potential benefits of refusing to pay. If you want to stay up to date with all my parking ticket videos and my other legal explainer videos, do subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell. Thank you. Now, if you've been given something that looks like a fine, the first step is to check what kind of ticket it is. Is it from a parking enforcement company or is it from a public authority such as a local council or Transport for London? Look closely at the document. If it's an official fine from a council or from Transport for London, known as a penalty charge notice, you'll need to look at my video on how to challenge a council parking ticket, which you can find here. But if the document has been issued by a company, it's not a fine at all. Instead, it's an invoice for money the company claims it's owed because you have broken a contract with them by parking for too long or in the wrong place. You'll then need to establish whether the company is a member of one of the two accredited trade associations. These are the British Parking Association, known as the BPA, and the International Parking Community, or IPC. If the company is a member, it should say so on the ticket and on the company's website. You can use the BPA and IPC's online register of members to check. They're linked to in the show notes below. If the parking company belongs to the BPA or IPC, you have a choice whether to appeal or simply refuse to pay. If you think you've been unfairly fined, you can ignore the invoice or write to the company stating why you're not prepared to pay. Because the ticket is an invoice rather than a, a true criminal fine, the company can only force you to pay it if it takes you to the small claims court and proves it's entitled to the money it says you owe. But before you decide on this course of conduct, you do need to bear a couple of things in mind. First, although the company might well decide it's not worth the hassle of taking you to court, there's no guarantee that will be the case. Second, if the company successfully obtains judgment against you, you'll also be liable for court fees and it may affect your credit rating. If you're not comfortable with refusing to pay, you can appeal. Now you can only do so if you've not yet paid the fine. So don't be tempted to pay the fine at this stage if you're going to appeal. Your first step is to appeal to the private ticket company itself, which is generally a matter of sending a letter or an email to the address specified in the ticket for internal appeals. There's no set ground rules for appeals. You simply say why you think the fine was unfair. The more relevant evidence you can include to support your claim from as close to the incident as possible, the better. So that might be, for example, photos of inadequate signage or even a statement from a witness who can corroborate your claims. Now, it's also worth noting that members of the trade bodies are required by their codes of practice to give drivers a 10 minute grace period at the end of their stay, except for IAS members where the permitted parking period is an hour or less. And if your initial appeal doesn't succeed, that's not the end of the story. It's well worth considering a further appeal to one of the two independent trade bodies that hear private parking appeals, which succeed in about 40% of cases. But bear in mind that any discount for prompt payment offered by the parking company is likely to lapse while your appeal is being considered, so you could end up paying more. If the company belongs to the British Parking Association, you'll need to appeal to a body known, wait for it, as the Parking on Private Land Appeals, or POPLA, P-O-P-L-A. A link to their website's in the notes below. You'll need to start your appeal within 28 days of the company rejecting your first appeal. 
If the company is a member of the international parking community, you'll need to appeal to the Independent Appeals Service, IAS. Again, their website's below. Here you have a slightly shorter period to start your appeal. It's 21 days from the rejection of the first appeal. Appeals outside this 21 or 28 day time limit are only heard in exceptional circumstances. Now in both cases, you'll need to resubmit any evidence you sent to the company during your first appeal, the internal appeal. If your appeal succeeds, your fine will be cancelled. If it fails, you can still refuse to pay, although the fact your appeal has failed may count against you if the company takes you to court. What if the company you're dealing with isn't a member of the BPA or IPC? Well, you'll face, face the same basic choice between appealing and refusing to pay, but the risks and benefits involved in taking either route are slightly different. Your first route is to ignore the invoice or write to the company explaining why you're unwilling to pay. As with where the company is a member of a trade body, it's a bit of a gamble because it's open to the company to take you to the small claims court. But there's one important difference. Unless it's a member of a trade body, a company cannot lawfully obtain your name and address from the DVLA. So that might well make it unattractive to pursue you through the courts because they don't have your address to serve court papers on you, especially if you have a strong reason for disputing the fine. Your second route is to appeal. Now, unfortunately, where the company doesn't belong to a trade association, you have no legal right to have your appeal determined by an independent body. Although most companies have an internal appeals procedure which will be detailed on the ticket, there's no guarantee your appeal will be dealt with fairly. If you do choose to appeal, you should be wary of providing any information that might help the company succeed in taking you to court, including your address. A company can only lawfully pursue a claim for unpaid parking charges if it sends a notice to keeper to the vehicle's keeper within 56 days of the day after the vehicle was ticketed. That's Schedule 4, Paragraph 84 of the Protection of Freedoms Act 2012, which states and I quote, the notice must be given by sending it by post to a current address for service for the keeper so that it's delivered to that address within the relevant period. And according to paragraph 85, the relevant period is 56 days after the day on which a notice to driver was placed on the vehicle. Now that means it's in your interests to make it as difficult as possible for the company to track down your or the keeper's address. This is perfectly lawful, by the way. There is no legal duty on you to give your name or address to a random company that happens to walk along with a little computer and stick things on your windscreen. It's different from the police or local authority inspectors. These people have no legal rights to get your name and address at all. As I said, if they're a member of a trade body, then they will be entitled to get that information from the DVLA. So this doesn't work if they're a member of one of the two official trade bodies. Finally, it's worth checking any ticket or letter you've been given to see if it contains all the information required by Schedule 4 of the Protection of Freedoms Act 2012. I've always thought it's slightly ironic that legislation designed to impose parking fines on people is called Protection of Freedoms Act. It's very much the opposite, wouldn't you think? You can find the list of requirements for a ticket left on your windscreen at paragraph 7, subsection 2 of that Act. Those for a notice to keep her sent to you after you've received a windscreen ticket are at paragraph 8.2. Now, the requirements for a notice to keep her left when you haven't received a windscreen ticket are at 9.2 and are largely identical. In every case, the company must specify the vehicle, the land on which it was parked, the means by which the requirement to pay was brought to the attention of drivers, and the nature of the alleged parking violation. If any of these details aren't present, the company has no right to demand money from you. You can either raise this in an appeal or just choose to ignore the fine. If your vehicle wasn't ticketed on the day of the incident, but the company sent you a letter instead, Section 9.5 makes it clear you must receive the letter within 14 days of the day after the parking incident. If the company hasn't kept to this time limit, again, it has no legal right to pursue you for the fine and you can safely ignore it. 
I do hope you found this video useful. Remember, it's one of a series designed to put you in the driver's seat when challenging a parking ticket, including this one and this one. I'm Daniel Barnett. Please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already do, done so, please do subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.